pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, <coughs> excuse me, suspending certain provisions in the Open Meeting Law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Paragraph 20, Section 20, and the Governor's March 10, 2020 order, <coughs> imposing, <coughs> excuse me, imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Northfield Finance Committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. A record of the proceedings will be posted on the Town of Northfield website as soon as possible after the meeting. Tonight, we're happy to welcome, such as it is, Rick Martin and Russ Calbridge from the Tech School. Sorry we can't have you in person, but I guess we all know why. And I don't envy you your job these days. It must be difficult. How do you do shop classes? Well, we're going to explain all that um, okay. when we get started, because we have that on part of our PowerPoint. Okay, very good. So should we get started? Yes, go right ahead. Okay, all right. I'm gonna just share my screen with everybody if that's okay. Sure. Um, um, the host has to um, enable me to share my screen. Who's ever the host? Okay, that's Beth, our secretary. Beth, did you hear that? Oh. Yes, yeah, so I think are you able to do it? I can now, thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through our PowerPoint, um, and that will probably answer a lot of your questions. If not, we'll be happy to take some questions on the end. It'll take about 10 minutes or so, mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes. Just wanted to talk about in the last year some of our academic and vocational initiatives. I'm not going to kind of read them all because I'm going to show you um, some of them, but some of the uh, important ones are the bottom couple, where we're beginning a new medical assistant in LPM program in the next fall. Uh, that was due to a $250,000 competitive grant. Our other competitive grants within the last year and a half have been um, $500,000 for welding, two hundred seventy-five dollars for the vet program, $200,000 for machine technology, which actually that one just took place. We just bought those machines. $100,000 with our Perkins grant. We have more than 1.2 million competitive grants over the, over the last few years. Um, and that's helped getting everything off the ground. Here's some staff adjustments to support our increased enrollment. I'll go over the enrollment and how it impacts the town of Northfield in a few moments. But I wanted to let you know up front that we are adding these full-time positions or have added them. A guidance counselor, financial literacy, um, which is basically a replacement of our career enhancement course that we've always had, but our career enhancement instructor is now our co-op coordinator. So we had to get somebody else to that position. We added a full-time English history, which is half-time English and half-time history. We, this year, we added another instructor, not a veterinarian. We have one veterinarian, but we added an, um, a veterinarian technician. Uh, to support our growing vet program. Um, we added a third electrical instructor this year and a third carpentry instructor, which was a previous instructor we had in our CAD CAM program, which we then moved over to our carpentry program. Um, and then we added a third elect, uh, culinary arts um, full-time employee. That was a half-time position the last several years. But due to increased enrollment and um, support for the program, that's become a full-time. We added a vocational support paraprofessional as our special education numbers are the highest in the county. We needed a special education support within our vocational shops. We went from a half-time librarian to a full-time, and we're going to add a half-time dean of students, and the other half-time of that job will be an academic curriculum coordinator. That puts us back to where we were six years ago, 
when we used to have that extra administrative position, which we um, got rid of due to declining enrollment six to seven years ago, but now we're on the other end of the spectrum. Um, facility initiatives, we had a new vet science program that we renovated a science classroom. We are also planning to build a veterinary clinic on our own grounds without going out to the towns. And we can um, probably be able to do that because of the um, training and skill of our students and our faculty and our teachers. So we're looking forward to building that. We're clearing the space now. Um, we have revamped our welding shop program, electrical shop program, and we renovated our health technology shop program to add the medical assisting. We refurbished our cafeteria, changed our school store, and we are we applied last year for the Massachusetts School Building Authority for the Statement of Interest application, in which we are now understanding that we are in the process of review. So they are strongly considering us for a core building program. Uh, but we may not know about the results of that. It could be as soon as um, you know they get the site visits and all that kind of stuff will take place in the next year. So at the best case scenario, we could know something in a year, but more than likely it will be three to five years out. Um, a veterinary clinic, that's what it looks like. I'm going to scroll through some of this stuff pretty quickly. Um, a grooming area there, some of the high technology that we were able to purchase as part of our vet program, our chemistry lab in the vet program, animals on site, and our enrollment review. So right now, you know, we're in 2021, we have a projected enrollment of 15 to 20 more. Next year, we'll add 15 to 20 in the, the year after that, 15 to 20. So our projected enrollment will be 60 to 80 in that new shop program. We also just, we, I told you about the medical assistant program. We have a monitoring lab. We have all the equipment that you see there in front of you. Um, and that's the other part of the medical assistant. And we had to expand our nurse office, so we actually cut through a related shop space and expanded our nurse um, office, and we also added an LPN to the nurse office along with our registered nurse. Because of the COVID, um, we had to have our own COVID room to assess, so that's complete with a shower, a bed. We are currently, we just finished that up. That looks a lot better now than it does in that particular picture. That's an older one, um, but we needed to add some space and some beds and we were able to do that for COVID-19. Other thing for COVID-19 is you see the desk shields on your right. We have those in all of our academic classrooms. We ordered over 250 using the CARES grant and the SO1 grants to provide that um, spacing. We also had to purchase new desks, as you see there, and we had to do um, change our cafeteria. Here's our cafeteria on the left. Here's our gymnasium, which is now our cafeteria to support COVID-19. Can you see the two students are not just six feet apart, but they're eight feet apart on many, they're eight to 10 feet apart all over the cafeteria. That was the only way we could be able to feed them. We had to get rid of our assembly hall, which we don't like doing, but we had to in order to provide adequate classroom space for our growing enrollment and social distance. And so here's what we did here. We were basically taking um, the assembly hall and we turned it into four large classrooms. And that enables us the spacing that we desired and the spacing that we needed. And our students, did a majority of the electrical work and a lot of the carpentry work with that. Um, social distancing, you can see over here on the left is the hallways. You can only walk in one side. Um, and then you get to social distancing for some of the, you know, you see the hallways are all marked up. You can only go one way or the other way, or you can't go down a particular hallway. Um, hands on and remote learning, you see on the left, we, you know, the teacher got the mask and the students got the mask on. And on the right hand side, those are two teachers teaching a remote lesson from in the building. Um, we have our two electrical instructors and they get the camera pointed onto the screen 
he's pointing everything out is showing up on that little laptop and the teachers actually learning from the other teacher it was a good lesson i was able to witness that um vocational hands on in both the um auto mechanics in our concrete shops as you see there um you know we're teaching in our health technology program and that's what that looks like there so we move on to tents we had to purchase tents all over the place we had tents on all ends of the building we had them in our courtyards um here's our cafeteria that we refurbished our electrical shop that we added the second floor onto here's a house we built in irving we are finishing up the second house and we'll be starting a third house sometime next year in greenfield so we're expecting the second house to be done sometime at the end of the school year and um, we're excited about that. So that's two houses that are built in the town of Irving. That just shows you that. Now let's get to the numbers uh, before I turn it over to Russ. Here's where we are currently at in District 530. Here's where we project to be next year. Now the reason why we can accurately say we're gonna be in that ballpark is because we are graduating about 103, 104 seniors. We'll be taking in about 150 freshmen. So when you do that math, you can easily see we're going to be around 570 as a school district for next year. And you can see our enrollment growth that I've been talking about, which is why we needed to hire more staff, as you can see. When we look at Northfield's enrollment trends, they've been pretty flat. They haven't gone up as much as many of the other towns. You were at a high in 2015 of 42 students. You've been leveling off between you know, 27 and 30 for the last five years. And I project the red bar that you see in the right is based on what we project Northfield to be next year. Now, last year, I gave you a projection of 32 or 33, and you only had 27. So I like to be conservative on these projections, but these are based on number of graduates and then number of current applications. So when I do that, I come up with 28. We have five graduates coming from Northfield. I have six applications. So that brings me up to 28 projected for next year. And then I look at our special education population. These are all the other schools, Greenfield, Pioneer, Frontier, Maha, Mohawk, Turners, and now you have Franklin County Tech. We easily have the highest percent, which is why we need those other special services as well. And I'm going to turn the rest of this over to Russ, who's going to talk about the sources of funding, then the uses of funding, and he'll go through his whole screen. So, Russ, you want to take it from here? Sure. Thank you. Hello, folks. I'm Russ, the business manager at Franklin County Tech. Um, as you can see, we, uh, uh, from Rick's numbers on the enrollment side, we are a school that is definitely in a growth pattern. And by looking at the uh, screen in front of you, you can also see that our budget is <coughs> has grown um, also. The sources of our funding for our budget is this page, and this is where we get um, most of our funds coming from the uh, town assessment. We get uh, a good chunk of funds from the uh, state aid. I see one mistake on your state aid, Rick. It should be 4970000 um so oh, yeah, yeah. 97 yep on the state yeah, aid gotcha. um so yeah. we um we our town assessments in total to all of our towns increased by two and a half percent um you'll see that your assessment because your student population that rick had shown you on a previous screen had stayed the same from last year to this year and our next year's budget is based on who's in our building this year um, you're going to see that your your assessment has basically not changed from last year. Matter of fact, I think it might even go down a few bucks. But but um, for your budgeting purposes, I would probably use uh, the numbers that you used last year. Capital assessments, uh, that is the projects that we did on the parking lot, the uh, roof resurfacing that we did in the athletic fields, uh, windows and doors project. Uh, that fluctuates a little bit uh, by each year. Um, so we have a capital assessment of 196,000 state aid. We initially had a lower number when the governor released his chapter 70 state aid uh, to Franklin County Tech. 
uh, but we found that there was a reporting error in the state foundation enrollment. The state had 170 some odd students from Franklin County Tech listed as if they were regular high school students, not vocational students. And that, uh, that affects uh, our dollars, uh, especially on the state aid by about 2,500 bucks per, per student. So they're, they've made the correction, they've given us a, a new estimate for state aid for chapter 70, and that's the 4 million nine transportation our, our contract went up uh, a couple of years ago and now we're starting to see the, the reimbursement dollars from the state um, go up there's always a lag between what your bus transportation contract is and what you're paying out and it takes a year or two after before you see your your reimbursements uh, increase um, accordingly we also have um, non-member towns. So any, any town, we have 19 member towns and we have towns from uh, the town of Amherst and Leverett and some of those towns over that way and the Amherst Pelham Regional that come here to Franklin County Tech. And we have, I think our biggest Franklin County town that is not a member is, is um, Charlemont. So we have students from Charlemont, Ashfield, um, and some even from down in the um, Hatfield, Hadley way every now and then that come up to Franklin County Tech. So we use a portion of the tuition funds to help balance our budget. We have a tuition pre-employment program that uh, we split some of our staff. That is fully tuition. That's a special ed program that we run. Um, so we fund uh, some of our operating budget. We use the tuition from that program. Uh, we have other revenue sources. We always budget that conservatively. That's uh, if we sell off any old surplus equipment from our shops, our municipal Medicaid reimbursements, etc. And then you'll see we're using another pretty sizable chunk of E&D, which is your free cash in town. So uh, schools, we call it E&D, and we're using $575,000 of our E&D to help balance our budget. So that's the sources, and now we'll move on to the uses of funding. And these uh, line items are the state function codes that schools use to report out to the state. So um, as you'll see, they've all gone up gradually because Rick, as Rick highlighted, we are a growing school. Most of the funds are being reinvested back into instructional services. You can see that that went up um, from 6.6 .6 million to 6.7 million in our costs. The other big areas that have gone up, and again, it relates to growth, is our insurance for active employees. Um, we belong to the Hampshire Health Group, which is going to be lowering the insurance premiums by 2% for next year. However, we're going to have more teachers in our building. So we, uh, we took an estimate on what we need to, to ensure the teachers as they're coming in. Um, the insurance for retirees has stayed roughly the same. Uh, we have our retirees move to the Medigap coverage when they reach age 65. As long as they qualify for, for the Medicare, we have them move over. So. And then most of our other costs have stayed roughly the same. So we've got the $13.4 million budget for Franklin County Tech that, uh, if we did our math correctly, is all balanced. And we got a few little pretty graphs to show you. And uh, a few years back, I would joke that, that the town assessments started to look like Pac-Man because it was eating more of the pie. But now, as you can see, the town assessments are left less than 50% of the pie. Uh, we get a decent size uh, chunk of money from the state, which represents about 36% of the pie of our revenues. And then, like I told you on the previous screen, we get some funds from tuition and other revenues, and we also use our e and to balance. And then a pie chart on the appropriation side, how we spend our money, and um, you'll see the big red piece is, is the instructional services. That's the teachers and, and folks that are in the, in the classrooms, and this pie chart is split out by those functional codes that we used uh, previously. And that kind of sums up where we are budgetarily. Now get more specific on uh, the town of Northfield. So
So again, your enrollment held steady from, from the previous year, 27 students, 27 students. Your assessment uh, is going to be, uh, like I said, roughly, roughly the same. Um, your minimum contribution, which is a funny look at the little thing, actually went up. So if you look under the minimum contribution column, this is what the state formula dictates that you should be providing to us uh, um, as uh, local support. Our assessment to you though, however, went down. So you can see last year, our local assessment to you is $462,069. It's gonna drop to 461831. So, so like I said, for budgeting purposes, I think if you plug in 462,000, you'll be in a, in a good spot. Um, we are still in the process. We, we're having a public hearing on our budget Wednesday night. So our school committee will be there first reading of the, of the budget numbers that we're sharing with you tonight. And then we vote the final budget not until March. So if anything changes budgetarily, I would let your town administrator know, but we've been pretty consistent over the years that what we've presented to towns is what's actually happened uh, in our school committee. So that uh, that's that screen. And do we have any other financial screens, Rick? And then all oh, the yeah, capital, capital assessment. Yeah, capital assessment went down uh, slightly for for all of our towns, and your share actually went up slightly. The capital assessments based on fifty percent of the formula is based on the equalized valuation of your town properties, and. 50% is based on um, the U.S. Census, so your, your population, so the total population of the county. So the, the equalized valuation um, data has been changed and updated. I think that happens every two years. And with the updated data, your, your capital assessment went up a little bit. And I'm willing to take any questions. So it helps a lot that you're able to do a lot of this remodeling in house, where you know that you uh, had to change the rooms and that sort of thing. You do most, do all of it in house. So a lot, a lot we did the majority of it in house, and the other part that we're unable to do in house was when we broke up the assembly hall, timing was the issue because we received some of the kids and the ESSA grants in the early part of the year and we needed to get it done before school started so we hired a petition company to come in and petition off um, all of the walls within the assembly hall so we could have four classrooms so some of those things we hired out for with that kids in the yes and money we also purchased the fogging machines to defog a lot of the equipment and the cleaning um, supplies and the PPEs that we had. We brought, um, I believe right now, what is it, 5,000 of, of the masks and we bought the gloves and all the equipment needed in case students, I think we were shooting for eight to 10 masks per student that we would have in case they did bring theirs. We had them for the school bus drivers before they got on. Um, we only had, you know, 24 kids on a bus with a full bus. So that became a logistical nightmare at times. So there was a lot of uh, the aspects to start the school year, which needed to be considered. And um, the students were really concerned that the tents were going to be out there all year for the snow, and we assured them that wouldn't happen. So we yeah. started using some of the interior spaces, such as the gym and all that stuff. So yes. And someday you may have to reverse these things. Let's hope sooner than later. But yeah. Who knows? We don't know. I I remember you're talking a lot about this vet program, and it seems to have been very successful. You've got a lot of students in that. Yeah, we are going really, really well with that. That's a fully enrolled program. And, uh, you know, with our increased enrollment, you know, we needed to continue to expand. And um, one of the biggest needs in the county, according to the Regional Employment Board, was the medical assistant jobs that are available now in the um, community. So we started a medical assistant program, which is another way yeah. to help kids get right into the world of work. Seems like you're doing well at adapting to, to the needs of the county and serving them. 
That's why your enrollment's going up. You're very popular that way. You're doing a great job from what I hear. That's, okay. I don't know. With Northfield, we're losing enrollment at Pioneer. Of course, we don't have a lot of young families moving into town either, so that, that affects it. Yeah, I think that's a concern. When I was looking at the kindergarten through sixth grade enrollment for the entire county, because this is how I do my enrollment projections going out five or ten years, um, it looked like some of our communities, like out in the Mohawk area, those enrollments in the elementary levels are actually going up. And, and then Pioneer and Frontier seem to be either stable or going down. Um, your enrollment to Franklin County Tech has been pretty flat. So there's other reasons going on or why um, the enrollment isn't um, going in the right direction at the Pioneer High School. And I'm not sure what that is. No, I don't know either for sure, <laughs> but yeah. Any of the other members want to ask any questions or make any comments here? A good presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. It's always, it's always good news when you talk to us, I think. <laughs> it's kind of upbeat and we're pleased to have you come and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank anything you. else? Um, how, Andrea, do you have anything? This is our town administrator. <clears throat> Yeah, anything? No, I, enough for me to plug in numbers for you to keep moving forward on the budget. So, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right. Then I guess that's it. Thank you very much. We appreciate you participating. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Have, have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. We'll see you maybe at town meeting. I guess they're gone. Huh? <clears throat> but uh, the superintendent was at our town meeting last what, June when we had it to answer any questions. So, okay, um, I don't see that Tony has come on tonight. Last week he contacted me the next day and said that he just totally forgot about it. So I was hoping we'd see him tonight. <clears throat> Let's go back and do the uh, minutes very first meeting. Those were sent out at the Anybody want to make a motion about them? I move the minutes of February 1. Second. Okay, motion has been made by Jack that we accept the minutes of February 1 and 2 seconded that motion. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Jackson, aye. aye. Okay. And that, that's unanimous then, those of the that are here tonight. I'd like to <clears throat> offer a statement at this time, excuse me. <clears throat> and based on uh, as, uh, my comments are about last week's meeting. In reference to the 2 1 February 1 meeting, an allegation had been made publicly that our understanding. Uh, the, the Finance Committee did not understand the EMS financing. Please do not confuse understanding with agreement. I think we understand it very well. However, we don't agree with it. Our role in town government is to make recommendations to our taxpayers as to expenditures, taxpayers and voters. We feel that there is something that does not seem equitable in asking our taxpayers to supplement the EMS budget with an average of about 40,000, 45,000 each year for three years so far. It's coming up. This is in addition to our taxpayers voting to pay for the ambulance at the rate of $50,000 a year for five years, plus interest, while our EMS also serves a neighboring town for the receipts from patients' insurance. 
and now taking on another neighboring town for $15,000 per year, in addition to receipts from their patients. Further, I have never encountered such disrespect and unprofessionalism as was shown at our last meeting over this disagreement. Northfield has two departments that are considered call slash volunteer who make their services available to our residents. However, their work is compensated. Is compensated. Their work is compensated when they are called to service. In the case of the EMS chief who serves the town as a paramedic, he is, was paid a little over 11700 in 2020. While we respect the EMS chief's dedication, he must understand that we are all accountable to the taxpayers. We are not questioning his integrity. We are challenging Northfield's taxpayers' fair and equitable treatment. We need to be reassured that Northfield residents' taxes are not being misused to subsidize our neighbors disproportionately. Okay, and um, I think next we'll go into Andrea's um, budget. She's separated out to select board and administrative and that sort of thing. So uh, sent out, we had one set. I didn't compare what you sent today to what we'd had before you left with it. Um, so let's lose, use today's, whatever you Yes, and use, use the second one. The only difference with the second one is I have some updated health numbers, but the rest of it's exactly the same. Okay. It's health insurance is the only place where I had to send again after Melissa and I spoke uh, in the afternoon. But otherwise it's the same one that I sent earlier. I was trying to get it out so people had some time sure. with it. But I really felt that I should send out the corrected health numbers before the okay. meeting as well. Tech school apparently participates in the same health insurance that we do then. Yes, Most yes, we, we do. And I can speak to that when we get to why our numbers, yeah, what's happening. Yeah, I need to do it, yes, okay. Um, so uh, if we go by, based on what you have in front of you, I tried to highlight in red I didn't highlight um, COLA changes because they're sort of not real changes in the sense that they're discretionary or being triggered by something other than your vote already. Yeah. Um, but um, you'll see that I did increase the select board dues line item in the first section and that being that we will be going to five, that there are a couple of organizations that they belong to that um, base things on numbers and you'll see they were right up against the $1,200 um, budget last year so I just uh, put that up a few hundred dollars uh, because you'll have three new members next year um, nothing's changing in, in my request for my budget you know obviously just the COLA uh, the accountant salary line item is changing but you probably knew this would happen because we, we've gone from this accountant salary to an accountant's assessment yeah could we go back just a bit here sure um, is uh, something up in the select men's wages. Sure. Is that where you've put in the this uh, secretarial earth? The board's clerk is the third line. Yes. I actually added it on the new version. I added board clerk in parentheses so you could see it, yes. Okay, and that's the one that serves various committees then? Yes. Okay, that's, that's what it yeah. is. It's in the selectmen's department because that's yes. where it always was. Sure, okay. Yeah, that's the third line down, yeah. which is just going up by a colon, a step. It'll be the first step. Okay. So. Um, now the accountant that you were just speaking of. Correct. Um, I have not received any request for a change in that assessment, although it's only just February, so I suppose I could, but I have not received any uh, change in that, so I'm putting in what we have under contract right now. Okay, that's the accounting firm we're talking about there. Correct. Okay. Correct. So uh, that adjustment um, was made, and we're going to see how far we may have to make it. We may have to come up with some funds at the end of the year. I think I told you way back when we started this process. Right now, we're continuing to pay um, out of that line item, and let me just double check where that's at. 
I-10. Because that count, if that amount will probably run short and we will have to deal with it. Um, right, it's, it's, it's got about 10,000 left in it, so um, it won't quite make it till the end of the year, but we can either try to transfer from somewhere or deal with it um, at annual. It should get pretty close to the last couple of months. Okay. You'll see it was 27 and going to 34, so it's going to be a couple of months shy. Okay. And then next year it would be fully funded. Okay. Um, I am requesting that we consider at least a $10,000 increase to the legal line item. Uh, there's a lot going on this year. You've already you've already had to supplement that, and we'll, may, we'll probably end up short at the end of the year, based on uh, issues that are happening in the general, which is not only the Shell Bridge, but a lot of activity with the planning board with very specific um, and complicated um, projects requiring legal assistance. Um, we've had a couple of personnel matters. Um, I don't anticipate that we'll see anything, but. <laughs> But generally speaking, I think that we do have a couple of very serious planning board matters that are just large projects. We do have to consult our attorneys on those very specifically. Um, and I think the Shell Bridge project is going to be carrying on for a number of years. Um, we do have some um, legal advice there that we work on them with MassDOT and, and right of way. Yes, I, I know there's a difference here, but um, some people don't seem to understand that when technical help is needed, it's the applicant that is paying for it when they have the planning board. That's, that's certain kinds of help. So that's technical, correct. So yes. we have hired a technical person to assist the select board uh, with the solar project, and that's what she does. She's very good. I, I know who she is at working at the very technical aspects of solar proposals, reviewing so but she's not a lawyer. No. So there's, there's other legal questions yeah. that our planning board um, need to that ask. Needs, yes. So putting contracts with her and various things that we, we have to do um, uh, related to those projects that are outside the scope of the technical expertise yes. of, the, of the person we have. And the applicant pays for those, the yes. technical people. But yes. that's the yes. way the words are written in the law. That you, get, you get to hire a technical expert. It doesn't cover your gender legal. No. Okay. If anybody else has any questions on these things, speak up while we're going through them, rather than... I'm looking at the spreadsheet, Andrea. Yes. You're, you're requesting 35000 for legal? Is that... Is that uh, not That would be my new request, correct. Okay. Last year it was 25. I almost want to say, is that enough? I mean, you've already I spent... I hope so. Mitch, <laughs> haven't you already spent about 28000 Yes, you, some money was moved in from some other accounts specifically to address some very specific things. And we, we know we may be short at the end. There were some, uh, some pieces that are moving to, were a moving target that have now been settled out. Um, but we are certainly still dealing with some of the other legal aspects, including some of the planning board things and the right-of-way um, aspects of the um, Shellbridge project. So I suspect that it's going to take some additional legal funding before this year is up. Well, my point is maybe uh, if you've already spent 28,000, maybe 35,000 is, is on the short side. It's possible. I'm hoping we'll be through the majority of our right of way. That has to be done by the summer. So that part that we're spending 10 to 15 on will be gone. So if we do have shell bridge questions, it will be about uh, Mass DOT and contract, um, it won't be about the right of way because those issues have to be settled before that contract is bid. Um, so that's where I'm hoping that will be wrapped up before before we'll, ha it go, we'll go through the all of next year. It has to be wrapped up before they'll bid it in June or July. Okay, thank you. But I will. I I will. I've been trying to watch that line item and see where we're headed. So I was trying to be conservative, but you're right. It's it's always a it's always a guessing game. Something could show up in six months that we didn't expect now. Um, and you do have a breakdown, just so you know. I did send you a second document that's got a couple of things on it. One of them is the select board expense. Jumping back for a second, 
Um, this is a sub document that I create, um, and this allows me to put together the selectman's budget. So if you look at it, it has line items that are subtotal under. So when you see things, for example, the selectman's expense, when you see the technology line item, I show you how I got to that $6,000 request with the .gov, that's our annual domain name registration of um, forestfieldmna.gov, that's $500, the Civic Plus and the ClearGov, those are those assessments and they feed back into the 2000 so 6000 so that so I broke it down a little so you could see how I got to those numbers. Um, and in the selectman's expense, it's not too much detail. Um, but I wanted to point it out because the next category we get into is the technology category. Um, it was a very amorphous category when I started and things were being charged to various accounts because the names were, you know, network management, computer support. And so there wasn't a lot of consistency. So I'm trying very hard to make sure that we're charging the like items and like items to certain so we can track exactly what we're expending on each kind of item. So uh, this, this, this technology piece is also then broken down on the sub sheet that I've given you. So, you know, the copy machine is in the technology, but they call internet, that's actually our um, Comcast bill directly for our internet payment. Uh, network management, that's actually, um, that's actually Northeast IT. We've changed from Guardian to Northeast IT. And based on our contract with them now, uh, which includes support, I'm able to actually come up with a firm number. Guardian didn't include any support, so that number was always out there. Uh, but I have a firm contract with them now. Um, so that part has gone up a little, but I took computer support and licenses down because I shouldn't need as much support because my contract now includes support from my vendor. So I was able to take some of the money out of support. But underneath it, you'll see the licenses. The VADAR license, which we're paying annually, um, that is also, that is not only our license for that software, but we wrapped the purchase into a five-year, no interest loan, so to speak, with them. So when you usually buy the software, you pay like 40 grand up front for your, this is our accounting and tax collecting and assessing software. We put it all together now. Um, so for no interest, they spread out that piece over five years. So we're paying not only our, um, our, our seat licenses for all the people using it, um, but also we're paying off the cost of the actual purchase of the software. We did add a seat to this license for an additional $600 for the year um, because the assistant finance position can't access it if the accountant is using it. They were sharing the license. So for $655, um, it made a lot of sense for us to add her because she's doing all our input of all our bills now. She's enter, helping to enter payroll, which is really, really great because she's now cross-trained. So our treasurer collector is out. We actually have somebody who can, who's, do, who's able to do soft, or to do payroll. So and she's also able to help. She set up the warrant. So we've got somebody in place. So we've got coverage um, back backstop coverage on a lot that we didn't have before. And it was it, it'd be very nervous. That's good. Yeah. Very, it's very good. Um, we also have some licenses in our office and email and archiving. Uh, now that we're going to be uh, holding our own office licenses. Um, email is the other one I'm unsure of. I've had a lot of requests. I was actually going to drop this more than we thought it this year till it, till it settles out. We've had a lot of discussion about getting official licenses, email licenses for boards and committees, and we have to pay for those per committee, per every one we get, we have to pay per month for an email license because we archive. Because we're a community, we have to not only give the email out, we have to archive all of their emails because they are now public documents. So in order to do that, we we're talking about with our new vendor, starting to issue some emails that were set, that set up a system so that some of our boards and committees and some additional people, for example, our select boards never used to have individual licensed email accounts. They do now. Um, so we're going to have you know, 
to more people with those licenses. We've got some committees who've expressed interest in those licenses. Um, I have somebody on the um, sewer commission who wants a, an email. You know, as as I do all those emails, I have to increase. It's not. It's eighteen dollars a month for every one of those. So it's a couple hundred dollars a year for every email that we issue through the town. So, so you're. Let's see if I got this right. I know there are two. I know of a few that have the name town email the town, but I didn't know that it went to all the different committees and so. It forth. doesn't yet. That's our hope. <laughs> is to set up a committee wide an email so they can conduct business through that because right now people do it on their personal email, but they're dealing with public documents on a personal email. So we really need to get them onto a town email. They'll be able to access the town email, but they should be able to do business on and off through a, through one of our archived emails. I've never thought of it. But I do my hear all the notices on my own. You know, hi Tony. Right, but the finance committee, if you had an email that was finance committee at northfieldma.gov, you could check into it with your own, but you should be conducting all your business through a town email account. That way, if anybody wanted to see that record or anybody requested anything, we would have that archive. Yeah. And that's really where the They wouldn't be able to see all my personal one just to get no. a look at the town. No, one. and that's the problem we face now. If somebody asks for something, Somebody has to either produce all their personal emails or has to go through their personal emails. Um, and you can go back years. So we need to get a point in time where we start archiving these by committee so that they're conducting yeah. their interactions with the public on an official email that's being preserved. So um, having said that, we don't spend 10000 yet, but I don't know what that number is going to be yet. And we're just about to start talking about issuing some more with our new vendor. So I, I didn't touch that yet. I'm hoping that maybe that number will go down next year. Okay. okay. Uh, other support, again, I took that down. I don't know what that's gonna be because we have a new vendor this year. It may be that we don't end up spending a lot of that and next year I can lower that number too. We're just switching over, so I'm a little unsure to start cutting too much out of the budget until I'm sure we don't need it. But I'm hopeful with uh, our new vendors that we will be able to drop some of the uh, cost and I think we're already experiencing what we feel is better service for us for what we wanted to do. So, uh, so that so that we're really we're really happy with with uh, our vendors so far. They've only been on board for a month, but, um, okay. but they're starting off on the right foot. Um, then you'll see that we have that door lock software um, that's annual, and I've left the 1,000 replace equipment in there right now. Um, we do have a few pieces that go here and there, including a printer or a monitor or low-end stuff, not necessarily full computers, but but um, but all the little pieces that, that support computers. Um, so that's really all of our technology uh, support equipment for the town hall. And that can be anybody from, you know, the police to yeah. the assessors to me to secretary to, you know, we try to, try to do it among all the departments so everybody doesn't have to try and guess and put in technology line items because you'd be seeing that pop up everywhere and that seems very cost ineffective if we could just do it in one line item and keep that to kind of a minimum. So I just wanted to give that breakdown on how I got to some of the line items in the technology uh, request. So there's no real change there. In fact, that whole budget's going down slightly and I'm hopeful that if things are going well, we won't see any increases, maybe even decreases in that again next year. If we get technology under control. Okay. On the uh, town buildings. Yes. I feel very strongly about keeping the building maintenance person's salary under town buildings and uh, not moving. I have had the request from Highway to move that position salary because we have moved that position reporting wise under. Highway, um, I didn't do anything with the budget here. Um, you know, I, that's really a discussion piece. Uh, I, when when we deliberate and make our decisions on things, that is one thing I think we can talk about. Um, right, and there's other pieces that that would then have to move as well and become questionable to I me. Mean, I don't want to move the actual budget pieces that pertain to work being done at the town hall. I don't want to lose those because 
they can get quickly scattered in the wind but there's you know there's a cell phone in here you know so it would take some assessment more than just moving the one line item. Yeah so I think we'll think about it so when we do and talk with you when we do the brain. Right and we need to talk about the logic of if we take the person out but leave their budget in like how's that all going to work out so I think there needs to be some financial discussion about that before we just piecemeal pull. Yeah why is there an increase of this amount and 700 something? The increases that I have I put a little bit more are you talking about for the salary? Yes. That's the salary that they hired at and that's the COLA because the salary was one step up because of the person's it wasn't the first step on the chart. Oh that's 721 dollars I get it. For the next year's salary. Right okay. I mean we'll see we have I slightly decreased or slightly increased the water budget looks like we were pushing up against that and I had to pretty dramatically increase the sewer line item that has stayed flat for a number of years but it's it's already over the new sewer the new sewer hit the new finally hit the town hall and I can tell you looking at this that the sewer use was budgeted at 2200 and we paid a $3,727 bill for this year so clearly that the town hall yeah yes so I raised it to 4,000 for next year but we will I'm hoping it will balance out with all the other accounts because we put one line item here we won't have to do anything about it but actually that that account is in that specific line sub line is in the red but again I'm hoping it'll balance out with other accounts we don't spend so and I noticed Skip put in for an increase in water fees for their building and for hydrants so well water changed their formula and it's not on use anymore it's on these units which have a certain logic to it but because we're municipal we're considered it's not our use anymore it's it's based on the number of units and the number of units have to do with office space and where it's more business like than it is are you talking water or sewer sewer okay you said water all right oh I'm sorry sewer it's the sewer one that went up dramatically water went up a little bit right but not much I would only do 50 but sewer went up dramatically because of the unit system but it hasn't gone up quite a bit in years because there's not a ton of usage at the town hall but you know obviously we have public bathrooms and this year our usage would have been down but it will go back up obviously when the senior center is open again we haven't I don't know if you've received the sewer department budget yet we have I I have one I have to ask him if that's the final version he was going to take it back to the sewer commissioners but I don't see where they have a meeting scheduled so I'm going to ask him if I can forward it to you because I'm just sitting on it yeah okay there's no reason that you know if they need to approve it or whether he's just bringing it back to them okay I have that I have that with him about that Okay. Um, so there's no real changes into the, any of the rest of the general town hall maintenance line. Um, there's nothing much you'll see in the town reports, town clock, inspection services other than COLA and STEP. Um, I've not received any change to the animal control officer's salary contract. I said it's still estimate note written there, but I have not received that there's going to be any change to that. And if it is, I don't expect it would be dramatic. But that's through the sheriff's office. So they tend to be okay. very um, reasonable about their increases. They don't, yeah. even the animal shelter that we belonged to, the regional shelter has not increased in years. So I'm not necessarily anticipating that that number should go up. Okay. Um, obviously, then you hit the schools. I will put the um, tech school budget in with the numbers that they're suggesting now. I don't mm-hmm. have numbers for anything else in terms of the higher uh, He said that, did we say they were voting the budget? this week School they should committee. probably have an early budget so maybe we'll see a number then yeah and I'm, Pioneer I'm, as I'm level public. funding the tuition and transportation for out of school district yes. I don't think that there should be a problem with that I think it's a fairly good number we do have one student who is participating um, 
they've been in and out of the transportation is running a little different it's running less frequently but as a result it has to run a little more expensively i have not been I have not been um, assessed the um, tuition yet, so, but even still, I don't expect it'll go up. Usually the tuition, we have to pay the flat out of district tuition rate has not been okay. dramatic. So I think just level of funding that should be more uh, Pioneer is having the public hearing, I think it's Thursday night this week, and right. then next week the school committee will vote on the budget. So then we'll have a number yes. uh, to plug in there. Um, so veteran services that's an assessment yeah. so the veterans district um, uh, went up slightly and um, on just level funding we haven't we haven't um, seen any need to increase the soldier relief benefit it's one I hate to cut though because at any time they can just add to that yeah. um, that someone can show up and you you don't really have any yeah. Yeah. so Although you can always take it down, there's a there's a balancing act there. Um, then you've got a small some small groups veterans celebrations. Um, um, how about the uh, 350th? We gave, we appropriated something last year. Last year you appropriated it as an article, which then yes. allows them to carry it forward. So I have not heard from them. I assume. <laughs> They came in and asked for, you know, like one or two thousand. I said, are you going to do this every year? So I said, why don't you go for a bigger number to last longer? So I think they're going to be sufficient for a little while. I don't think they're at the point where they're going to need any funding. Okay. For a while. As they get closer, they may have to start, if they're going to have people booked or do things, then they may need deposits and all those kinds of things. I think they'll be back closer to the, um, closer okay. to. Okay. But I like the idea of the article is better that way. Yeah, that allows that funding to stay open. If you do it annually, you're guessing every year and you're putting it on the tax rate every year and they may spend nothing or they may come up short. So yes. it made sense to just kind of give them a block of money to run with for the next few years. And then as they begin to decide what they're going to do and what those costs are going to be, they can come back to you. It is a special event. It's not usually something you throw a budget in for because it will be gone in a few years. Yes, it's not yes. a new department, it's not an employee, it's not a new, so it makes sense to do it as a car value. Okay. And we can track it that way. Um, so uh, the for, next is the FERCOG piece. I just got their um, assessment in, so those are, um, as far as I understand, uh, you know, that's a real number, which, okay. uh, which actually went down slightly based on based on their formula i'm not sure on the the other three are actually ones we get on our cherry sheet so they haven't but they, those are the numbers that showed up in the governor's assessment those but until we get the house ways and means numbers those are just placeholders they're very small they usually only change a little bit but i put in at least the governor's numbers okay it's a starting um, good starting point right to represent that those might change very minor so that uh, uh, whole account went down. Uh, retirement assessment is going up. Um, that's an assessment for, based on the formula. So um, not much we can we can do about that. Um, workers comp. I um, I have since I have been doing the payroll sheets. Um, I have discovered that workers' comp, unemployment, Medicare, the numbers I think were right, but they were kind of being carried in the wrong budgets for a while. So I don't know why the workers' comp number um, has been running negative. Um, I'm trying to get the right budget to the right thing, but you'll see that we spent um, uh, we had a budget of uh, 13000 and the year before they spent 18. So it makes no sense to me that that number is actually going to be going down. I mean, it, it does fluctuate some, but I brought it up to kind of match where I think we should be a little closer. Okay. Um, workers comp, um, that one also is one where it looks like we were budgeting um, a little bit off. We were allocating um, sorry, sorry. the wrong yeah. unemployment, yeah. Down to unemployment, where we were um, allocating this one. This one goes with the. This one flows with your salaries. It's a your unemployment number. 
so um, so if the salaries go up, the assessment goes up. It's a function of your payroll. So I raised it, uh, raised it as you can see. We expended 25, almost 26, and salaries will go up. And so I I raise it up to re to reflect what colas and all those changes will do to keep pace with that. So. Um, Actually, no, that's the one I held, so I'm sorry, workers' comp is the one I raised to keep pace with the salaries. Okay. So, being county retired, uh, workers' comp and unemployment, and then you'll see in Medicare, I've been trying to shift those back in to reflect the actual payments, and then on my spreadsheet, based on the salary changes, it calculates a new number at the bottom, so I'm trying to keep close to, um, to those because they're formulas. Health insurance. So, here's what's going on with health insurance. Um, why do I have the old one printed here? You should, you have 160. I thought I had the new one printed yeah. as the health insurance number. Um, that should reflect it. That's a, um, I, I have the old one. That's really weird. I've, three times I've printed out this budget sheet to make sure I had the real numbers. But So you have 160 for, um, for uh, health insurance? And you'll yeah. see that. That right. That's a um, decrease. What do you have in last year's? I'm gonna pull up my sheet. So they went down slightly then. Right, it did, and also, um, also we had a um, we've had a change in what's going on with people, um, and you'll see that reflected in the inc pretty severe increase in um, in our retirement uh, health insurance. Um, and the reason that that's an issue is because we have a current retiree. Not eligible and, for Medicare. Well, we have a current, yes, we have a current retiree who's not eligible for Medicare, but not only that is that we have another uh, scheduled retirement, somebody, uh, an employee who's also given their notice that they will be retiring this, um, they will be retiring this uh, summer. And then we have another employee who has ask some questions. So we have potentially three retirees come, well, one is already on, they retire in January. Uh, one will be retiring shortly this summer and then one that's inquired. So we had to look pretty carefully at um, what was going on with the retiree account, health insurance account. And we did it based on the kind of plan that they have now. Um, so you'll see, I'm sorry, yeah, I have, I have uh, level funded at 190, the, the personal one. And the reason I funded it, did, I level funded it and didn't cut it uh, is because we will be hiring to fill those retiree positions and they can change their insurance. Like if you have an employee who's a, for example, a single plan and you hire somebody who's on, for example, a family plan. Um, so yes, we would be getting a 2%. It looks like close to 2% reduction in our health insurance cost per the plan, but the plans change. So and, I left that at 190 and then I had to, it took up the retiree from 47.3 to 60. Because if you add all three of those people in as potential retirees, that's our retirement, that's our budget. I mean, that, that budget just won't hold. And they all know that, I think they're probably, I don't know, I'm just guessing they're probably all too young for Medicare. But if they uh, are 65, they have to sign up for Medicare. Right. Well, we automatically do that. We go that we 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 automatically do that, and then they then they switch to the MedEx plan, which is they can buy the supplemental plan, which is yeah. much much cheaper, and we pay half of that. Um, but until they reach that age, we can't. And you know, they're entitled to you know by yes. law, chapter 30, 50 percent from uh, as a retiree. So we have to budget in 50 percent. And for example, if a retiree is on an employee plus one, we have to cover 50% of that plan. If that's what they're on now, we can kind of assume that's what they're going to be on next. <coughs> so we've estimated based on the current employees potentially retiring, what plans they're on, what those costs would be to go up, and we've level funded at 190 the current um, because we don't know what changes in plans those will become uh, okay. an employee. So it's, it's 13,000, it's not huge. I mean, health insurance can spike, but unfortunately we can't really quite take advantage of, of what is looking to be, you know, 
decrease here yeah. um, due to other factors in the budget. Okay. So, um, and, uh, for, and, and then Medicare 2000 increases just a matching payroll. Again, Could matching we payroll. We go back up to the state and county assessments. Yes. What is RMV non renewal? Oh, the, when you go to, what, yeah, that, that's assessed on our cherry sheet. Oh, okay. So we have, yeah, there's several charges. Regional transportation is a charge on our air pollution assessment, this RMV yeah. non-renewal. It's a, it's a registry of motor vehicles assessment. Yeah, sounds like. So those three, those three numbers are oh, deducted on our, those are the deductions on our cherry sheet, and they, I'm okay. not even sure how they're computed. They're relatively okay. minor, but everybody pays them. Okay. And then we're down to Medicare and other uh, other insurance. That's um, that's mostly towns town insurance for all our vehicles, for all our buildings, um, and um, there we we are we're sitting fairly comfortable in that right right now, and um, are probably looking at a pretty close to no change in those assessments. That's so, through Maya. Correct. So that would be all our buildings, all, all our vehicles, yeah. um, and also it will include, which I have not yet received, our VFIS, which is our firefighters and police officers. Okay. Um, that's and I have nothing from them yet. So that budget could change if that if those assessments go up. Right now, I'm not anticipating a huge change for Maya at all. Um, and you'll see that it's a little higher than we paid. You always have to build in a little bit because, for example. We just got a bill for eight hundred dollars today. If you change your fleet schedule, like when you get the new police vehicle, you have to pay a few hundred dollars more. When you take the old one off, it's a little bit cheaper. You put your pay a little higher. So there's fluctuations in our um, schedule at all times based on um, buildings changes um, and vehicle changes in our schedule. So I, I will I will hopefully be getting the VFI uh, the um, VFIS. Uh, numbers soon and if they're relatively the same then I don't anticipate any change in that if there's going to be any dramatic change in that I will let you know but at this point in time I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we're just basically looking at a, at a level fund there at this point I don't have any numbers to indicate a, a big change okay did anybody have any questions as we went along did anything come up now that you want to ask about And then uh, it's a separate sheet here for select men's expense. Right, that's the one that feeds into the select men's expenses, and you can see the breakdown that I was talking about. Yes. So, so that's just informational for you. I do, I do it to keep track of all the different little assessment pieces yeah. okay. um, that feed into the budget. I thought I saw somewhere. Um, Oh, yeah, board's good. Somewhere I thought I saw something besides the town administrative assistant, but maybe it was this other clerks. Yeah, the first three you have the select board, then you have uh, the, the select the secretary, and yeah. then you have the board's clerk. Those first three are all wages. It's the board's clerk, probably when I first. Right. It says it says selectman wages. On yes, it. but that was, I've added the little BRD CLK because it's not clear that that's the board's clerk position, but that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, I guess the first time I saw it, it said something about part time slack man, and I thought, who is that? Okay, I'll sit on that then. Um, you want to go over the capital plan now? So, the town hall capital plan. For the town plan. hall, yeah. Let me just um, <laughs> get to the capital pages. I figured it was time to actually set up a sheet to do town hall capital ideas, as opposed to just sort of bring them every year to try and get a sense. It's getting to the right capital budget, town hall. So um, first thing that I have given you is an actual 10-year plan with ideas. It's just sort of the first chance to start. Um, you'll see the first year was 2021, kind of shows the security system in there. Um, 2022, we had put in for the, we did the office furniture piece. Um, we're still talking about whether or not we're going to need to, to change that desk situation. Um, we had a pretty good quote 
from, I mean, they were going to build a beautiful wooden desk. They still will for us if we decide we want it with the curve and we'll be able to hold the, you know, everyone's laptops. Um, that would be done at, through the um, correctional, mass correctional. Uh, so that's, that's still on the table, but they're not building anything right now. But uh, I suspect they would be in the course of fiscal 22. If um, and I know you were, you guys were supportive of it two years ago, we just it all kind of fell apart with COVID. And now, what's the additional security? Was it the all the locks? That was correct. Yeah. That was the change in all the locks and door going to the. And they weren't all done at the. We did all the meeting rooms and the front, all the access doors. So front okay. and back doors, meeting rooms, and then I had to do a couple things with the police department to make them sure. um, in, in, an, in an ad accessible in a different way. Um, so that's what that all covered, to get but all of those pieces done. You've got individual offices. That you Correct, which we have not done yet. We have not done okay. individual pieces. And I have thought about next year, um, seeing if we could go after that grant, the security grant again, since they funded it this year, the Maya grant see if I could get some of that paid, but I did put on there an additional 15 then just for next year, 2023, not this proposed yeah. budget, um, to consider doing the rest of the offices um, at that time. It just, it makes a lot of sense to finally go that route at some point. But um, we did get security grants this year for cameras, which we haven't, haven't put up yet, but um, we would hopefully get to and then um, next year, looking at applying for that grant again to get some assistance towards doing the office doors. But the other thing they added this year to consider was some rugs, uh, carpeting and flooring. If you come in, you'll see that there's a lot of mismatched, worn down, long hallway rugs. I think they've been moved all over the building from this office to that office. Um, there's a couple of long hallways in the back. You'll see that the floor is in very rough shape. Um, I'm loath to do the floors over, although I have talked to our new maintenance person that my number one priority is to get those floors stripped and waxed. Um, but it, once we do that, it makes sense to cover them properly with some all weather carpeting. Um, and some of the ones are pretty worn out, the rubber's cracking up, the, I think the carpets haven't been replaced in many, many years. No one seems to remember when they came into service. And then upstairs, uh, the wooden floors that lead through the hallway and then into the um, auditorium. There's like three, four, five, six little tiny rugs all bunched up together. Um, so eventually, I'd love to see those floors done in the future, in future years, um, possibly 2024. That's why there's a 5,000 in there, possibly to do those wooden floors. But again, it doesn't make sense to do any of those floors over unless you put something down to protect when people come in initially when they come into the to the to the buildings uh, for for uh, for the buildings. So we, went over, we, measured, we measured all the spaces. Um, uh, Sandra did a, a lovely diagram. I have it folded out with all the different floors and then went online and, and did some pricing um, uh, to actually give you to give a sense. And I think I included that the mats and runners um, with the handout for that request. Um, which was several uh, several years ago, but they still held up. But several years ago, uh, a contractor had said that the auditorium floor was getting pretty thin. Do you remember something about that, Jeff? Uh, no, I don't, Lois. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a long time ago, and it's still holding up, I noticed. But so. You, you really don't know, you know, about that. But I, I agree, if you're going to sand it and so forth, you need some protection on part of it anyway. Right. So this year, that really the only two requests for this year would be to consider the select board office and the mats. Um, that would be my, my capital request to put in the building this year. And then next year, going after the in 2023, the security and maybe 2024, Maybe those would get reversed. Maybe it would be changed in a year's time. But I was just trying to project out the potential. Yeah. Um, 2025, we would be, you know, I would start after a certain number of years. I've got computers that are going to be in the seven to 10 year range. So um, it might be a big 
need to replace there again. It's a few years out. Uh, the copier will probably need to be replaced. It's usually on a lease, and we just, after the five, fifth or sixth year, we buy it outright, and then we replace it. It gets a lot of heavy use. Um, it starts to get hard to find the parts. That's what normally happens is our service person says, this is a six-year-old machine. I can't, I can't hardly service it anymore. I'm scrounging for the parts. And as you'll see, we put the old one in the select board's room. Um, it's a freebie now to us. It doesn't cost us anything. And we were just yeah. getting it dies. It makes a little bit of a racket. Copies very faintly. Um, <laughs> okay. So, and when it goes, it goes, and we will do it. Use it as long as you can. That's it. Right, use it as long. It's just a nice spare machine to have up there in a meeting when someone wants a quick copy or something. Sure. Um, we've used it for that, and then the same thing could happen. The new one that we have now could go upstairs, but it might die. That might die next year, and then we won't have one there for a few years. It just is hit or miss. So I put that in there. But again, we reevaluate when we get to each of those years to see if it's if it's on, um, and then the servers. Um, up to 2030. I stuck them in there. We're going to hopefully get new one, two new ones this year based on the grant I got. That's about 30000 to buy two new servers and install them, but we have that fully funded through the Community Compact IT grant, so we won't need any funding for that. So I pushed out new servers for seven to ten years. Seven years is really pushing on a, on a full server, but so I pushed it out. So that just sort of the beginnings, other things might show up. Like I, I listed some things, auditorium floor, miscellaneous equipment, groundskeeping. There's nothing in there. I don't know about the mower, but I just wanted to start putting things on the right-hand column that would give you a sense of the kinds of things that would be capital expenses that we don't want to lose track of. Um, we've talked about uh, uh, floor or sound mitigation in the auditorium. Yes, what about that, the baffles we talked about? Right, right. We need to look into that and get some pricing so that maybe that moves up in 2023 and we don't, you know, um, once we start to fill those in. So I've been asking around everybody, what are the capital things that I want? We can at least get them on the schedule and then as the need arises, move them around. But uh, if we don't make a list of them, we don't, we don't, we, we just, we don't yeah. see them. It would seem as though um, that's a project that needs to be all or nothing. I mean, if you can do a couple of baffles and say, well, we'll do a couple each year. Yeah, and, and there's a question of whether we cover the walls. We tried to kind of do that marginally. Uh, I think there's a, a ceiling issue. I think you're going to have to bring the ceiling some kind of one of those creative ceiling things that they put in because it's really the sound rising that's the echo. It's somehow bringing the sound down in the room, I think. It's really finally going to solve that noise issue. And that's really going to be bringing in um, somebody technical who can who knows yeah. Several so years ago, there was talk that maybe do like a whole floor, the whole thing, and make more offices up there. But I don't hear much about the need for that now. But it really, what you're saying is just something as a, a baffle for the uh, right. Sound. The systems they put up to cut the sound. I mean, there's, there's. I've seen them in bigger spaces. I don't, I don't know. But we'd have to bring in somebody who has some suggestions to analyze the situation. Okay. Um, but and I did on the technology. I, I don't have anything on software. I'm hoping we're, we're licensing now. 365 Office is a license, so I don't see us. Maybe you know, eventually, 10, 20, 20 years, you might need new, I don't know, financial software, but. Uh, the computers I have five in in a few years, but you have to understand, you have 25 minimum, at least, computers in your system now. Between laptops and desktops, various buildings, various offices, there's a good 25 computers operating in the system. Um, so it's it's something that we really need to manage and really yeah. not let them all go. You don't have to replace a computer all the time. Computers are boxes now. You know, we took all those computers that the Guardian wanted us to replace, and we just gutted them. We just put in new memory, new chips. We only we had to buy a couple because some were so old they were still standalone units, and we actually couldn't replace the memory. That's how old they were. Yeah. But in order to upgrade Windows, we had to actually upgrade memory. And it's, so I don't know where that's all going to be a few years down the road. Technology changes so fast. But I just want you to keep in mind that you do have a good 25 systems going. And if we don't keep up with it, we end up hitting this block where we have 20 of them out of date. And I really don't want to do that anymore. If we can right. deal with four, five, six at a time, get them alternating, 
you're not running up against this $35,000 article that you had to give me for technology to update all these computers and update all of this. We need to, to spread that out a little bit and manage it a little bit. So. Okay, anybody have any questions on any of these? On the capital or the budget? No? All right. Anyway, uh, Andrea has given us some other information today that we had asked for. You've got uh, on the EMS. Well, I should have all gotten an email with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got 16 through 20. We've got five right. years of it here. Right. I Those are all the, last, the cert currently certified ones. Uh, yeah, it was hard. Uh, nobody seemed to be like tracking them in a list somewhere. We had to go on the DOR website and find them. Although people, you know, the budget was showing every year your budget expenditure. Um, I've now put in, last year I put on the sheet your actual certified EMS account number and I'll continue to do that so it'll be easier to track every year at the budget time, you know. And if we need to go back and look, they'll be printed in your budget book each year what their actual certified numbers were. But this is, this is off the... C-O-R. We sussed out where they were holding it, where they were uh, printing it. Are those annual excess revenue or cumulative? You, you, you can't accumulate it. It's like free cash. It gets certified every year. So it's accumulating. As you'll see, it's going up. But each year it has to be recertified, just like free cash. Right. So fiscal year 20, you got $128,343. Correct. That's excess revenue that didn't come in from just fiscal year 20 but whatever came in 20 added to fiscal year 19. Right and that can change I mean if you overexpend your budget the 28 will go down so you have to think of it as you know you're budgeting conservatively uh, you're you know spending conservatively on a budget and that in that way you're increasing your I mean people do that to increase their free cash as they hold a certain line on a budget knowing that they're not going to expend to that, and that money gets rolled into free cash. And you can do the same thing with free cash. You can generate free cash. You're generating enterprise funds by holding a certain budget and then being conservative with your budget and then knowing that that number. So yes, each year when your budget comes in fairly similar, it's going to add anything you don't spend on top of the recertified. But if you had a really bad year and all of a sudden, you know, it went haywire, that number could go down. Because it has to be recertified every year. But the capital, well, first of all, last week, Mark said there was $250,000 in the excess revenue fund. That's not the case. I don't know. I, 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 no. Well, you, you, no. you gave the number here 128. That, fiscal year 20, that was the certified number. I'm pretty sure I gave him that number. I don't know. Now, I know there's an ambulance account like a donation account. Now the capital plan uh, for EMS, the excess revenue is at 168,000. Uh, yeah, I got that from him today. So I wanted you to see that we're working on it. Um, so our next step is to go through his revenue and, uh, you know, and, and his, um, uh, plan what you wanted to do is say how can we generate you know the money and make sure it's there um, well how does that 168 relate to that now the there's an estimate you know we were I, I, I was there's a potential estimate for next year but it hasn't been certified yet and that's higher than the 128 but I hate to put out a number because because it's not certified yet. And that may be that may be where he's getting a number that's higher than what you're seeing. Because fiscal year 21 is about is to be certified relatively shortly. And they do submit a number and I can kind of see what they've submitted. Um, but it isn't it isn't technically certified yet. So we'll have a new fiscal 21 number probably by the end of the month. And then you'll have the new number for 21. Because this is only 20. So he's probably thinking of a number closer to the 21 number. That may be where he's coming from. Well, one thing to be aware of, uh, you know, you said last week you were going to use excess revenue to 
pay for upcoming ambulances, well, you're only on average accumulating fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year. I mean, it would take you twenty five years to get enough money for one ambulance. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know that I said that we, that was the only way we we're going to do it, but I think that there's a I, that's what Mark and I are going to work on as a plan. I mean, you'll actually see. I mean, yes, it started out small because I'm not even sure how much excess revenue there was before that one until you started. But now, like between 19 and 20, that was almost 30,000. So we'll see what what next year comes in, and we'll see if that number, the number that I'm being given, is is more than 30,000 of dollars of an increase, more than that. So I'm suspecting that that number is growing. Okay, thank you. But I will have that number for you as soon as it is certified, and then we can we can have this discussion. I think it will be clearer. And Mark and I are, you know, it's been hard because I was away even during the last meeting. But um, So Mark and I have not had the chance to meet. But he did take that form. He filled it out like I asked. I said, we need to start, as you suggested, we need to start with all the potential items. Let's get it on the plan. Let's get them uh, revenue to get them out on the plan when we think they are. Now we need to work on the revenue piece. And that's what this is, and that's what we will move forward with and have a, and have more of a plan on where we're going to end up. And uh, I mean, it's hard with excess revenue because it's like free cash. You can only plan so much, but you're right. You can build in. We can build in to grow that account, and that's the plan we need to have. Okay, uh, Lois, I got a couple of questions to put forward to Andrea. Um, I see that uh, now with this $10,000, is this going to be applied for fiscal 21 or fiscal 22? That uh, which, which the donation that was uh, made by Bernadston. Are we going to get a $10,000 for fiscal 21 or is the first year that's going to start as fiscal 22? No, well, that was fiscal 21. Fiscal opinion. 21. Okay. Now, on that MOU that you brought forward to us that you had, we're still in the midst of negotiating with Bernardston. Has that been completed, or is there with, still no amendment to that agree MOU? Do you mean with Irving or with no, Bernardston? No, no, with Bernardston. Remember, you brought forward that they wanted a member on a ambulance purchase committee. No, so nothing, we're still nothing. under the original MOU. Correct. There is no other agreement. Okay. And no so, amendment. Okay, so that was a $10,000 donation. They don't have any further say in the use of that money. No. All right. Um, now, the other thing is the MOU that was completed with Irving, uh, are they going to do a similar type of situation where they're going to be donated in an amount of $15,000 each fiscal year? Yes. That's okay. the expectation, yes. And the, that's written um, into the agreement. That's actually written into the agreement. Uh, could you be kind enough to provide to the Finance Committee a copy of that uh, MOU? Because uh, we have not seen it at all, so we'd like to see a completed or a legal copy of that. Yep. And the last thing I have to ask is I see that on the capital plan there, uh, Mark is asking for an EMS building for fiscal 2028 for $750,000. Um, what is the background on that? I I, I I don't know. I think that may have just been there for a long time because there's no there's been no movement on the other. But uh, it's not a, it's not any plan that I'm part of. Okay, that's why I'm asking. I just want to know. Price? I'm still I'm still working on the idea that you're building a facility that house all your public service, all your public emergency. Services. Yeah, that's what yeah that's what I'm asking. That's what I hope that our goal yeah. is to uh, achieve that, that. That may just be uh, born of sheer desperation on his part. Yeah. Okay. All right. That answers all my questions. Thank you. It might have been price to purchasing where he is. I don't know. I'm not sure. So. Okay. Um, there's another budget that I haven't seen, and that's the ZBA. Did I miss it? Or. <clears throat> What is their number? I can tell you if I have it. 
when I don't have memorized off the top of my head. I don't go by the numbers. 176 is their department. Okay. We thought we had all of them in. Because that is their department number. Yeah, okay. 75. No, I don't have a copy either. I will check my records. If I have it, I will print it out and forward it. If not, they will be getting an email. But I thought we had them all. And that's 176, so I can check on that and see if I have and the sewer that I mentioned are just... Yeah, the sewer, I'm pretty sure is going to tell me I can send that to you. Okay. If that's the case, I'll get that out to you right away. Because I, I didn't want to send anything if his board is then going to come no, and no. change it. it just okay. Um, radios. Uh, each of the three departments has put in radios and been quite specific in it. Are we sure that we are... I just want the state to pay for as many of them as they will. You know, uh, it, it's going through the cog, fur cog, right? Um, yes. And have, have you had any, any chance, you probably haven't now, to go through and see who wants what on radios and how how many can we get through the fur cog and how many do we actually have to account for money? Well, it's, I think it's done per service so um so i think they've been following i mean i've sat in on a couple of the fur cog radio discussions okay so it's very technical in the sense that they you know they can get each so many um and i think they've been meeting and following along on those i don't think that they're i don't i think that it's pretty clear what they're being promised i mean i think when you look at the ems request he sent you the fur cog sheets as okay. part of his background so and you'll be able to actually see what they're using. Um, if you look at your capital projects for the radio, um, Mark, uh, Mark included the Franklin Mutual Council government sheets that shows yeah. you the Motorola versus the... There were two right. different brands. Yeah. yeah, Motorola and Kenwood. Right, and the different negotiated prices. And, um, and then they tell them each what they're going to be allotted. $50 okay. for radio programming, $300 per installation. So um, they've had to, they have to submit all of that um, to the FERCOG as part of this program. So it's pretty accurate then that from the three departments that what they're telling us their needs are, are over and above what the FERCOG is going to get for us. Right. The FERCOG is probably never going to cover everything. And you have some special needs, I think. Um, uh, uh, Skip alluded, uh, spoke directly to that at the last meeting that they don't cover at all some of this no. mutual aid stuff because we are on different frequencies with other states, but we're on the border, so we use Vermont, New Hampshire. Those are pieces um, that were never going to be part of this. No, and here is this. this. You can send us this today, I think. Yeah, I sent you his, yes. And his, so. Okay. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions about the radios? No. But I'll check one last time. I'll go through it now that we have his. But I'm, I'm pretty sure, looking at the fur cog sheets, you know, they're reporting how many handsets they have, how many base radios they have, yes. and that's part of the whole. Yeah. Okay. And there's no, no question they're needed, and we want to take care of them, I would think. You know, as to what they need. Yes. Okay. There's um, not much we can do. I mean, if they change this system, we kind of have to have the radios. Yeah. Okay. Um, you referred here to the free cash and, and these other certifications will come at that time. And yeah. Further yeah. work on it, you yeah. said. Yeah, we, we just had some stuff we had to put in on some balance sheets. So we are, you know, it, I'm pretty much expecting it within the next few weeks. They they pretty much assured me that they thought, you know, we'll be we'll have everything in by the end of February. There was a couple of different things we had to do, um, and if that's the case, then hopefully, you know, as soon as we have numbers, I will I will absolutely be forwarding you. I'll be the first. You'll be the first people to hear. <laughs> 
Okay. But I know how I'm waiting. I'm anxiously too. I'm trying to do the master spreadsheets, but I can't really get very far um, in terms of revenue. You know. Right. Right. Until, until we see um, that. Jog our memories on this. How far have we had audit? How many? What year is the last year that's been audited now? Are we up uh, to date now? No, well, we're going to have one this year for 2020. Yes. So we 18. So we're just waiting on the auditor. They'll they'll tell us when they're coming, and we'll have 2020 then. Yeah. That will bring us close up. Yeah. And okay. we will have to do. Um, We'll have to do our uh, uh, update for retirement for OPEB, but yes. I, have to, I think I have enough funding to cover that one more time okay. out of the article. And then that's every two years as well. So okay. we'll be getting a 2020. We're just waiting to close out everything. The treasurer collector and the tax collector, uh, the tax collector, the accountant, it's very hard to ask them to do an audit at the same time that they're. Closing out. Finishing these things up. So as soon as they're done, I'm going to be pushing the auditor and the OPEP people, and we'll be doing those right okay. on the heels. Okay. Um, so we'll have those, you know, as soon as they're in. But it doesn't make sense to, for, until they have everything squared away for the auditor to show up. No, anything. no, no. Well, I'm glad we're up right up to that point. Anyway, that's good. Um, now, last week, I happened to think about this. And I, I sent you an email today. Are, this, are you and the site board ready to set an opening date for warrant articles? Now, I know we have the capital plans and capital requests from the various departments, but at the last minute, sometimes it, somebody comes in with some money article. So that's um, what the I budget, the, the warrant articles, the warrant's open. It's always open. I mean, people can submit a request now to get on the warrant with signatures. Yeah. But the um, the date that it's closed, uh, the date that it's closing, I updated. Um, uh, I updated. I think I, did I send that uh, out to you? It might be that I gave it to the select board to approve at their next meeting. Make yeah, sure that they're happy with the closing date. But um, basically, I back it up from town meeting. So technically, yeah. they have to legally sign and post the warrant by April fifteenth. Which means to me, without a special meeting, that they're the closest meeting they have to that is um, the sixth Tuesday, the sixth. They would miss it if they did it unless they had a special meeting. So I always propose that they have it the week, you know, the two weeks before that, so that they get it at a meeting, they look at it, and they say, "Oh yeah, that looks really, that looks fine," or they change it, and they it, and then it comes to them at their two-week meeting to sign. So right now, with April 6th being there, I can tell you what I'm proposing for them. They signed the warrant on the 6th. Um, they would sign the warrant the 6th, which means that two weeks before that, the warrant would have to close. Because that's what I would bring them. And usually, since they're meeting on Tuesdays, I would probably close the warrant on the Monday so that I could type up the warrant. And let me just see. It looks like you have March 22nd. We're looking at the calendar tomorrow night. Yes, that's what I gave you. So yeah, he okay. has it. And I was just going to open my select board stuff to see it, but yeah, so March twenty second would be the date of the closing of the warrant. So everything that would be have to be in by then, so they so they'll they'll they officially can vote a closing date at their meeting next tomorrow, and that then does cut off time for people to submit things. Uh, Sandra put something on their agenda, something about finance committee, but yeah, it affects us because I think it's the finance the finance budget calendar. It's the calendar, right? Oh, okay. They're updated. It's, They're updating it's, the calendar. It's the dates to get us up to speed on on what what you are asking about, actually. So once they um, once they approve that, the, I'll send you guys the new calendar. Doesn't have much. It's just been added to. Okay, because uh, we should be do, doing our deliberations and allocating money before, probably before that. Hopefully, anyway, yes. I hate to see something come in the last minute on it. But anyway, okay, that's that's fine. Uh, next, there. Well, I just want to go over 
the requirements that I'm still going to contact. Because now next week is a holiday, so we won't be meeting for two weeks now. Um, I'm planning, we need to see Highway. Um, Dan will want to do his. I thought he might be on tonight, but uh, he is not here. Um, Sewer, we'll talk to them. And uh, I have to contact the Conservation Commission. I think you and I talked about that earlier, Andrea. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, depending what the ZBA shows, because now like last year it was something like the printer or something like that. It was, yeah, and so, I don't have the budget and I don't know how I overlooked that. I thought I checked them all off, but I'll contact her. Sure. I looked in my list of uh, budgets and I think I have everybody but okay. I there's in there but I'll double check that I haven't received it and just didn't put it in there so but I will contact her. be in contact with these people but try to get them try to wrap it up next meeting if I can and one thing I would like uh, if you could get for us Andrea mm -hmm. you probably have it for insurance purposes or this another an inventory of the highway department uh, trucks and motorized equipment, I guess would be the better. Well, I'll send you the, uh, we have an insurance schedule, has every vehicle the town owns on it. That, that should be it, I would think. I'll send that to you. Okay. The rest of you are, want to see that, don't you? I would think. Absolutely. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It has every every vehicle the town insures, every yeah. real lease, fire, highway. Okay. Every That's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, let's see. We sent out, we got the balances from Aaron, and I sent those out to people this week. I uh, don't think there was anything else that went out. Anybody else have anything that they want to bring up at this time? Lois, can I just make a, a, a statement that the, this is Beth, I'm sorry. Um, oh, okay. Regarding the PBS, PBRS budget, the public hearing is actually tomorrow night at 7. Oh, it's then, Wednesday night, okay. And then, um, no, tomorrow, so. Tuesday night, Tuesday. excuse me. Okay, got it. And then they'll be voting on it on Thursday the 11th. Oh, so, okay. Both meetings are this week then. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, I got something saying that, well, last week there was a uh, budget subcommittee meeting and I couldn't get on. It turns out I wasn't the only one. I guess they, the rest of us, the finance committee people, uh, chairs, had trouble too. So I just took a wild chance when I was trying and I sent an email to the superintendent, got results, the secretary sent the information so they got into the meeting, but it was quite late. And then the others tell me that's what they did too. Anyway, okay, uh, there was something that said that if we, if you want to speak at the public hearing, you have to get on ahead of time. And I tried that last week and wasn't successful, but uh, there is, you can try. There's a way to do it if you want to be speaking at the public hearing on it. So that that should be over with then this week with the budget, right, Beth, that way. Yes, they'll be voting on it on Thursday. So Andrea then would have that figure. Uh, it can get us pretty close. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll get you the sewer and the ZBA. Okay. Now, did anybody have any meetings they attended? Tony, did your CPA have a meeting? We did have a meeting. It was just, um, uh, we, uh, at our previous meeting, we didn't officially vote on which uh, projects to talk about. Yeah. Um, so we had a very brief meeting where we talked about the projects and voted that we would have all of them come in and talk to us on oh. the 18th of this month. Oh, good. So they'll, uh, making, uh, we want to stick with what we've got in our 
Constitution or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, sure. How many requests do you have? There were four. Okay. There were four. One of them was for a, well, for the Council on Aging for a shed. Yeah. Another one was for fixing up some trails in and around the golf course that actually are on private property, but they've gotten permission to do some work on those. Another one is for a pavilion behind the elementary school. Yeah. That was brought by the PTO. And the fourth one was something that had the most controversy was they're asking for money, the Unitarian Church. We did give them money for shingling and painting the steeple last time, but apparently there was some rotten timbers inside, in and around the town clock that needed to be replaced. It wasn't on the original, as I understand it anyway, wasn't on the original thing that was presented to the insurance company and the contractor. What is unclear is whether or not the contractor talked to them, talked to the church about the need for replacing those, or did they just do it on their own? Oh, they've been replaced. We've been talking with Boston, too, and that's where the idea came up about replacing those with a new one. Well, I'm not sure is the town clock a town asset, which you said definitely yes, and there are rules about that on the Community Preservation Act. So we're juggling all this stuff trying to figure out if there is any way and should we do or pay for some work that's already been completed. Oh, I see. That's the thing, and there's some definite questions I want to ask of the church, whether or not they were told about this. My own personal opinion is if they weren't told about this at the time and the contractor just went ahead and did it, that's between the church, the contractor, and the insurance company, and we don't want to have anything to do with that. But there's unanswered questions yet. Yeah, yeah. I understand that since the work has been done, the clock doesn't work now. Right, the clock hasn't worked, that's right. I don't know what that's about, but apparently these rotten timbers were in the support around the clock. So are the support timbers a town asset? I don't know. We better sort that out. Sure, okay, thank you. Anybody, any other committees that anybody was on, is on that have met or anything? No, there's been no meetings of the Emergency Service Building Committee. Okay. You had a potential date for a meeting? We had a potential date, but I've sent an email for confirmation, and I have not heard back from Chief Donnell. Okay. I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything they want to bring up or that we need for the future here before we finish up hearing from people and then go to deliberations? Anybody think of anything that's missing so far? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
All right. Thank you very much. Will someone make a motion that we adjourn? So moved. Okay. I second that motion. Motion made and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.